This video shows the uh, basic setup of Power SDR for use with uh, Hermes Light 2. It's not a video on power usage of Power SDR, but just uh, some of the specifics for setting up a Hermes Light 2. So you see here I have um, version 3.4.9. It's the most recent version. And um, I'll go ahead and power it up. And then um, uh, I have the, a the uh, gain audio gain down to zero, but if I turn it, turn it up, we can hear some of the uh, FT8 signals on 40 meters that I'm tuned into. And I'll just go over the setup screens to begin with uh, to see all the uh, settings that are specific to the Hermes light. So uh, usually you want to select the Hermes radio model. Um, for basic usage, these should be checked. Uh, hardware options, we want to have the Apollo checked if you're going to be using the uh, power amplifier. And uh, for DHCP, uh, we want to reuse the last address and have Hermes here. Um, on this screen, uh, we don't have to do anything to the dither or random. Uh, Hermes Light 1 users may have remembered that uh, these had special meaning, but these have no meaning for the Hermes Light 2. Uh, the max RX frequency, uh, we could set that to uh, the maximum th that the Hermes Light 2 is capable of. Under options, I think this was left as is. Same with calibration. Filters. Uh, in the Hermes control, this is where you will set up the um, filter select uh, for the N2ADR um, companion filter board. Uh, you use external control and then uh, this selection pattern. And note here that this last bit, this last column, uh, this uh, means that the high pass filter is enabled for these bands, but disabled for 160 meters. High pass filter has to be disabled for 160 meters uh, to receive correctly. Um, there was some information going around where this was checked for 160 meters, but we want it unchecked. On the Alex screen, um, I did disable this protection. Sometimes I found that uh, this protection kicked in when it shouldn't have. That was the only change to the Alex screen. In the Apollo screen, these are the two um, check boxes that have a special meaning for the Hermes Light 2. Uh, the enable tuner is enable the onboard PA, power amplifier. So if you're using the five watt uh, amplifier, you want to have this checked. Uh, this enable filters is useful when um, the power amplifier is not enabled. Then if this is enabled, then uh, it will not switch the onboard TR. That's so that you could have full RF duplex. It, it, it probably is what everyone will want, so we might not uh, have that option in the future, but uh, usually if you want full RF duplex, you'll have this checked and this, the PA unchecked. So you're using the low power for TX and the main connector for your RX. Uh, I think the RX2 and uh, navigation were as is. For audio, uh, we have to use a VAC. There is no audio codec on the Hermes Light uh, 2, so um, you'll have to have one of the VACs enabled and, and uh, with the correct Windows driver and, and sound input and output for your system. Your sample right here uh, for the audio should match what your system is so that you don't have to resample the audio and uh, pay some extra CPU cycles for that. Display was as normal, DSP, no changes there. Uh, transmit, um, use the drive power. We'll, we'll get to that when we get to, this, to the uh, main screen. This is what sets the TX power level. You have 7.5 dB of um, range uh, with the Hermes Light 2. 
on PA settings under PA gain, this is something that some people might miss. By default, some of these values are higher, which causes um, the uh, signal to be attenuated. So you want to go through and lower these all to 38.8 so that you'll get the maximum five watts out of the Hermes Light 2. The watt meter, I haven't looked at this, um, but forward and reverse power are being uh, returned by the Hermes light, so it might be possible to calibrate this. Appearance and keyboard are the same. Cat controls, no, no changes there. I think there was one thing that I missed in the hardware setup. That is, we want to use the um, step attenuator. So under the options, uh, we enable the step attenuator, and we have it at uh, zero. Um, by default, you might get some attenuation on RX, and your Hermes Light 2 might seem a little deaf. Uh, but we want to uh, typically run it with a step attenuator enabled and uh, start out with an attenuation of zero. Okay, so now we can take a look at the main screen. And um, here we have a duplex enabled. Uh, usually we're running in a full duplex with the Hermes Light 2. Here we see the step attenuator, and that is at zero. And I can attenuate uh, uh, dB, 9 dB, and so on. When it says a zero, this matches the original Hermes where you had a fixed gain of 20 dB. Uh, and so at this setting, the Hermes Light uh, low noise amplifier is actually set to 20 dB. And so each of these is a, a dB less than that. So if we go down to eight, we're at about a gain of 12 dB. And um, I found that the range of uh, from 12 dB gain up to 20 dB gain is, is, is the sweet spot. Um, uh, you might start to lose a little bit of signal if you go below 12 dB of gain. Uh, here you see I have VAC1 enabled. And um, then if we want to test uh, transmit, uh, we can do uh, tune. And uh, we see the signal here. Um, some of these artifacts might be uh, due to overloading the receiver. Uh, but you see here that the attenuation goes down to, uh, th goes up to 31 dB attenuation uh, when we uh, are transmitting. And I did measure this into the uh, dummy load and saw five watts coming out. Um, some of the things I yet to do that would be great if someone wants to work on is the forward and reverse power. Uh, maybe this needs to be calibrated for use with um, power SDR. And also the S meter, uh, there's some calibration steps uh, that are published um, for uh, open HP SDR, power SDR that you can follow to better calibrate the S meter.